Lots of students around the world have asked me about how to start when it comes to memory. The memory world can be overwhelming and they want to know how you start as a beginner. So first of all, trying to get yourself familiar with like a lot of these flashcard applications and knowing where, where you are as a student can really help figure out what's your system and how can you improve that system or modify your system. What's important is that you as a student or as a professional really think about what you're doing so far as when you are learning new material, for example. Are you trying to just understand and then just memorize for a brief amount of time before the exam? Or do you want to really take the time to memorize each of those new concepts so that you can retain that information into your long-term memory? And so approaching memory palaces, there's mnemonics, there's major system, there's peg system. There's a lot of different techniques out there. And I try to walk you through like some of the, the programs that are out there. So first we have XMind. So XMind Zen or XMind is a mind mapping software. And so if you look over here, you can easily just pick a topic, you know, like, we can think of glycolysis, okay? And we can talk about how, you know, going down each of the pathway of glycolysis, you put down next topic, next topic, next topic. So this is a mind map, all right? All right glucose 6 phosphate, for example. All right, and then you move on to the next part of the, step, the, the pathway. And so in this way, you're trying to memorize a sequence of events. But first, you want to try to understand the, the concept first. You know, that glycolysis is really what gets ATP, a net ATP of 2 ATP. And then after that, going into the Krebs cycle, then the electron transport chain. And this is overall, in essence, to give you a, a greater amount of ATP so that you have energy. Okay? so. That's just a small example of a, a mind map, but you know this can apply to many, many different types of, of topics, of classes. Okay, in fact, I would argue that this probably applies for every single class. Um, and so mind mapping is one of the, I guess the most important things that you can do for your classes, just because you wanna make sure that you have everything organized into your, your, your memory or your space when you are in class, okay? So this is kind of my approach to, to memory palaces in general, but it can apply to a lot, of, a lot of different types of techniques in general. So first of all, you wanna understand the concept. Then you wanna mind map it through XMind. I know there's other softwares out there, but I, I really like this software. But um, I'm sure that if you Google mind mapping software, you can probably find many different types that fit you best. Okay, and then it says to find a, a potential place to use as a memory palace. So we have in this Discord server, it's called Memory World. And in this Memory World Discord server, I'll make sure to post a link in the description. But essentially, in here, you have lots of resources. So over here, we have, for example, Loci, loci Selection. Well, sorry, Loci Collection. Uh, essentially, you're selecting some of the places that we just posted, these are, many of these places are coming from Pinterest, from Reddit, but look at these places. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful place and an enclosed space for you to have an appropriate memory palace for you to, when you start, go, through, go around in a clockwise fashion and make a story that way or counterclockwise. It depends on what your, your strategy is for every memory palace. You want to have some conventions. But I really think that, you know, these places, definitely amazing, can be pretty memorable. Um, like, for example, like this, this is memorable. This reminds me of a an Ender's Game room in, in, this, in space. Another place like, um, like this? No. The place has to be really unique, like like this, for example, like a spiral um, treehouse of some sort. 
that has multiple rooms. And so going up the room, you know, first you would go to enter this room. So this is the idea of chaining memory palaces, actually, because you have multiple enclosed spaces. And then eventually you reach the top where you can essentially try to find or figure out another storyline that works well for, with this. But you might not know what I'm saying in terms of places and how to really map them into a memory palace. So let's start off with looking at some of the the lowest to high tier techniques. So first, we have blunt force. And blunt force is the idea of you really just looking and being exposed to the new material and praying that you'll remember it when the time comes. So you're just essentially maybe just paying attention in class. Okay, but you're not writing down any notes. But you can write notes. Um, it's still blunt force regardless because you're not making any form of association with the new material that you're learning right now. You're just trying to be exposed to the material, trying to understand the material. And then later on, you know, when you have the extra time, make mnemonics to solidify that retention for yourself. And that's a low tier technique. A lot of students out there know about this technique. A major system is the idea of being, um, of having a number associated with a letter. So for example, number one is the letter T. Number two, is the letter N. Number three is the letter M. Number four is letter R. Number five is letter L. Number six is letter G. So I can keep going. Okay, I can keep going until 10. And that's where my, my major system pretty much stops. Same thing with peg system. And I think the reason why I do this is just because um, I can just, you know, when, when I go up to like 22, for example, I just have two N's. And I, I make up different stories with, with that in mind. But I think that um, having more numbers, like going up to 100, is something that might be a good investment for some of you. But we do have, we do have a Bunami system that really combines the major system and the peg system. So that will be easier for you to memorize, really. So I just combine major system and peg system, and I put them into a memory journey. So it's kind of funny. I'm using a memory technique to remember a memory technique. It's uh, very hilarious, actually. Uh, but the Dominic system here, this is the idea of associating numbers with people. And, and some people have done this. Uh, for example, when in, in like cards, deck of cards, we, we have like number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we, we just basically associate them with famous individuals like Tom Cruise or Beyonce. Okay. It's, it's very interesting. Because you're always thinking of that person's face with that number. I think that that can kind of overlap with major system, but I, I, don't want, I didn't want to ghost myself. So I really just tried to stick with, you know, the numbers to the letters to the words that I really want to be associated. Like I, I have the three, three line mapping technique for major and peg system. I didn't want to add another Dominic system. I didn't think it was necessary. But with the Russian doll technique, very, very obscure, very abstract kind of technique. It's a mid-tier technique, and I would say that it's pretty difficult to do, and, and I do it sometimes, but it's not definitely the highest recommendation as, as you know, when you go along a story of a Russian doll, you essentially, for example, think of a Xbox controller. And, in the X, and at the Xbox controller, you can see the letter X, Y, B and A, and you can probably zoom in on the X, okay, and at the X, you're imagining the X is a, is a field, okay, when you zoom into the X, and that field has aliens in, you know, the haystack um, that is shaped in the form of an X, and so you, you go into the, the, you know, that little hay, and you actually see an alien, okay, and you, d you try to fight the alien while you're there. You fight the alien, you open the alien's intestines, and again, we're zooming in on the alien because we, we killed the alien, and then, you know, in the alien, we, we notice that the microbes that they have is um, very infectious, and, and it's maybe a bacillus anthrax, for example. Uh, I'm just going, I'm just trying to go through um, a zoom, zooming in profile of all the images that you can think of. So controller, Okay, going towards a farm that had the letter X, 
okay? And then in that farm, there's an alien. And then you, um, as an individual, is fighting that alien in that X-shaped farm. Memory Palace is the idea of using a loci. So a loci is basically a place. It could be an enclosed space or an outdoor space, but I, I recommend indoor closed space because it's less chaotic that way. And then you make a storyline that's very exaggerated so that you really can't remember it. So we're using the idea of episodic memory, and that's a high-tier technique. And then next, that we, we are looking at chaining memory palaces, and we talked about that through the, that one place that we, we kind of looked over with the loci collection. And so if we go down, look around, it's this one. This is chaining memory palaces. And I think that this can work out. If memory, chaining memory palaces is kind of difficult, but if you have the right place, you can actually make it work. Or you can somehow get a good connection with this, with this, if there's like a certain door like here. And then when you go into that door, you magically kind of appear in this room. And in this room, you're trying to look at a microscope. In that microscope, you're looking outside and you see something very obscured because you want to make sure this is an episodic memory of some sort. Um, being in classes, it really made me try to make as many memory palaces as I can and it's it can be difficult when you first start but you can you'll get used to it all right so looking at the next part we have textbook verbatim memory so basically memorizing each word and a page word by word in proper order to to really just essentially have a good recall of every single word in the page and that's I think of this more so as a way to impress others, but it's very, very difficult to do. It probably takes over 10 years to really master all of the other techniques and then combining all of those techniques to make sure that you can actually do textbook verbatim um, in a kind of moderately fast fashion. But, you know, we all start off slow. It took me a, a long time to make memory palaces, to make, to really master a lot of these techniques. And I would say that uh, I, I kind of remember my first memory palace. It took me around four to six hours to create just because I wanted to make sure I have the perfect place, the perfect concept, all right? And the really, I just wanted to make sure the storyline was great. And so how do you get started? I mentioned that you really just have to start off with the low-tier techniques and then build your way up to the high-tier techniques. You may or may not use up all of these techniques. But if you're using at least some and you are familiar with all of these techniques, at least you have something in your arsenal to make sure that you, in fact, are using the techniques appropriately and the best judgment you have when you are approaching new content in your classes. It doesn't have to be just from your classes. Just It could be from work, you know, when you're being trained on the job and you see something you definitely probably need to memorize in you kind of try to make episodic memories based off of it with memory journeys, memory palaces. And then you can essentially also incorporate some of the senses that you have and enha enhance them in your memory palace. It's kind of, it sounds kind of weird, but I mean, like, if you're kind of in a memory palace, you can associate like a song, a catchy song that you know of, like um, Family Guy's theme song or The Simpsons theme song you can also try to imagine that you're smelling like fresh apple pie stuff like that it can be pretty fun i think that using memory is pretty fun in general and now if you're moving down the list here we see that there's a lot of different applications that you can use and people here have questions about each of these applications anki is one of the, the most popular flashcard applications out there as it utilizes spaced repetition learning, but also at the same time, it has a lot of features. If you look over here, it tells you, you know, that you know, how many cards you finished today. It makes you stay on track of your records. I haven't been really doing any cards. Um, I do some cards from time to time, but I, I try to um, make very, very in-depth cards in terms of memory palaces. So one card can contain like seven pieces of information when but some but many individuals many students try to just have one content 
for each card. I kind of want like all of it in one because I'm recalling a whole memory palace. And when you re try to recall your memory palace, make sure you can be you can recall it forwards and backwards. It really does help if you can recall it faster. But it's episodic memory, so you should be able to recall it if you've created the memory palaces like in, in like the perfect quote unquote perfect way. So REM is the idea of you kind of just making um, like notes, like random notes. It's basically an organized way of putting your notes down. So like right here, for example, this is a part of REM and you just, you know, type down things that you're trying to do and you check them off. It's like a to-do list, but you can really type down anything you want, really. Polar Shelf is basically like Super Memo where you are incrementally reading portions of textbooks. Um, there's also individuals asking about techniques, asking about why you know, certain techniques work better than others, or maybe they're trying to make, make up new techniques. All right, there's questions about memory palaces. And if we look over here, there's like short mnemonics that we created, and we want to just showcase them. But, um, but over here, we have actors and actresses. So these are like characters in your memory palaces that you may want to use. I think it's great that we have like a lot of different characters here that we can freely use because once you use one character, you can't use it again for another palace. So that's why I want to store up a lot of characters here. And, and fortunately, I have a lot of members here who are just posting like characters that they're, they're using or characters that they will want to use eventually. And I do like taking the time to gather palaces, places that that I may potentially use as a memory palace. Because actually I used to spend one day a week, like on a Sunday, just stealing, taking as many, many places as I can to potentially use as my memory palace. I used to take a lot of pictures in Ikea and, you know, that worked out. I, I used some of the places in Ikea, but, you know, some of those rooms can get kind of uh, really repetitive. And, and so, you know, looking at all of this, I really hope the Memory World Discord server can be of help as it shows you all of the, the techniques out there. We have lots of individuals um, who are willing to answer questions. We have Anthony Medivir, we have Nelson Dellis, and I, I think we have Alex Mullen as well. So definitely, it's, it's a, um, a very safe environment. Um, sometimes we, we say, um, some some we showcase some of our memory palaces and it may not be safe safe for work but um it's important that your memory palaces are are really like a, a kind of like a trigger for you to memorize your places and so if it's episodic memory it could be involved with emotions that are extreme so that's why you know some of the places are not safe for work but i do want you to know that we're trying our best to really memorize some of the content that we're learning in school and that's why um, you know sometimes you just have to do what you got to do to study to to memorize right but remember that memorization is a luxury as understanding the material really does come first you know this applies to for pharmacy school where you really really just want to know how to get the resources you know where where do you find this piece of information and what is it about this patient case that's really important for you to know? And, and what are some important counseling points that you really need to pay attention to when you're approached with a patient case involving maybe STDs, having HIV, chest pain involving a myocardial infarction, and et cetera? So definitely um, important for you to put all of this into consideration as you are you know, progressing as a student. Hope you enjoyed this segment. Bye-bye.